Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky has apparently confirmed the start of his country's anticipated counteroffensive against Russia. He mentioned that both defensive and counteroffensive actions are currently taking place. However, Zelensky did not provide specific details regarding the stage or status of the counteroffensive. Welcome to Slant News. If you want to support, you can subscribe to our channel. The recent escalation of fighting in Ukraine's southern and eastern regions, coupled with speculation about the progress of the anticipated push, has made it challenging to assess the situation on the front lines. Ukrainian troops have reportedly made advancements near Bakhmut in the east and Zaporizhia in the south. Additionally, they have conducted long-range strikes on Russian targets. However, the conflicting narratives presented by the two warring sides make it difficult to determine the actual situation. Ukraine claims progress, while Russia asserts that it is successfully fending off attacks. In Russia's Kaluga region, which shares a border with the southern districts around Moscow, Governor Vladislav Shapsha reported on Telegram that a drone crashed near the village of Strelkovk on Sunday. The accuracy of this report has not been independently verified by the international media. Russian President Vladimir Putin, in a video interview published on Friday, acknowledged that Ukrainian forces had indeed initiated their offensive. He claimed that their attempted advances had failed and resulted in heavy casualties. Following discussions with Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau in Kiev, President Zelensky described Putin's comments as interesting. Zelensky expressed the importance of Russia realizing that their time is running out. Additionally, he shared that Ukraine's military commanders were in a positive state of mind and encouraged Trudeau to convey this message to Putin. During Trudeau's unannounced visit, he announced 500 million Canadian dollars, 297 million pounds, in new military aid for Ukraine. A joint statement released after the talks highlighted Canada's support for Ukraine's NATO membership aspirations, stating that it should occur as soon as conditions permit. The statement also indicated that this matter would be discussed at the upcoming NATO summit in Vilnius, Lithuania, scheduled for July. Reports suggest that fighting has intensified in recent days in the strategically significant southern Zaporizhia region, where Ukrainian forces aim to push south to divide Russian forces and penetrate the occupied territory connecting Russia to Crimea. However, Ukraine's progress in the region may be impeded by severe flooding caused by the destruction of the Nova Kakovka Dam last week. The flooding has affected an area of approximately 230 square miles, 596 square kilometers, on both sides of the Dnipro River. President Zelensky addressed the nation on Saturday, revealing that 3,000 people had been evacuated from the flooded Kherson and Mykolaiv regions. Oleksandr Prokutin, the head of Kherson's regional administration, reported a drop in water levels by 27 centimeters. However, more than 30 settlements on the right bank of the river, within Ukrainian-held territory, remain flooded, with nearly 4,000 residential buildings still submerged. Both NATO and Ukraine's military have accused Russia of causing the dam's destruction, while Russia has shifted blame onto Ukraine. However, it is highly likely that Russian forces, who controlled the dam, deliberately destroyed it to hinder the crossing of the river by Ukrainian forces as part of their ongoing counteroffensive, according to the media person Paul Adams.